All right, another box for the next running shoe giveaway. Let's open it up. Oh, three pairs of shoes. Shout out to Texas, the great state of Texas. Oh man, let's see. Let, we're not gonna open up all three. Let's just open up one, see what's inside. Oh my goodness. All right, here we go. We ready for this? Boom. Oh yes. Oh, the 1080s. Oh. The 1080s, I think these are the V9s. 1080 V9s, New Balance, thank you so much. Great state of Texas, you know who you are. Size 10, oh wow, I actually, have been eyeing, I don't own this shoe, I've been eyeing this shoe. All right, these will be for the next running shoe giveaway. Amazing, thank you again so much, so cool. Okay, so it was freezing this morning in Denver, Colorado. I'm burning up now, the sun has come out, hold on. Ah, okay, that's much better, much better. Answers is the key word for today because I'm giving you my answers to your questions from the last basically two weeks from Instagram, YouTube, Strava, email, and I can't answer all of them. I tried to grab uh, questions that basically could be applicable to many, many people. Let's dive in. Question number one comes from Instagram, Jaron Homer. He asked, hey, I've been getting injured pretty consistently for the past year, mostly because I'm a severe heel striker. Uh, I'm working on, he says, and I'm also, my cadence is way too slow, which I'm working on. This summer, I want to up my mileage to at least 60 miles per week and remain main injury free free that said is there a shoe you would suggest for someone like me it started with a stress reaction in both first metatarsals uh, then followed up with some shin problems and knee problems most recently so Jaron that's definitely a lot of injuries and it sounds like you need some stability shoes if you're pronating a lot and if you have if you're having stress reactions or stress fractures uh, you know that's a bone injury and so you have to walk that fine line between too much mileage and maybe not enough to hit the goals that you want to but to to get around that a little bit uh, a shoe with a little more cushion might help also because you're having a knee injury or a knee issue i don't know what that might be if it's a runner's knee or maybe an it band injury i'm not sure but that also might that leads me to believe that you might you might benefit from a little more cushion in your shoes so i wrote back to jaron and said the new balance Vongo. I really like that shoe. I don't own it, but I've tried it on in a running shoe store. I just don't need another stability shoe in my lineup, but the New Balance Vongo, uh, spelled V-O-N-G-O, would be one that I would look at. And then also, uh, maybe, probably not, but maybe try out the Nike Structure lineup. Uh, it's a little bit of a harder landing, I've, I've noticed. And so because of your metatarsal issues, you, anyway, it might be worth just trying and seeing if you like it. And if so, you can always add a little more cushion uh, through the uh, Spenco, which I use in my shoes. It's just this little cushion that I add for a little more protection from all the pounding uh, from the volume. And lastly, of course, the Hoka lineup, you've got the Bondi and the Arahi, Arahi, Arahi spelled A-R-A-H-I. Both of those are stability shoes from Hoka, and I believe it's the Bondi 6 is the most recent iteration, but those are very much maximalist shoes, a lot of cushion, and uh, you, anyway, try the, if you don't, if you haven't tried Hoka, it might be worth a shot to help. Okay, there you go, Jaren, I hope that helps. Moving on to question number two, uh, what shoe do you recommend for fast interval workouts and also can be used for racing? That's from Lizette Malvarez. Oh man, we've got a lot of options for you. So I'm just gonna throw them out and then break down a couple. The Saucony Fast Twitch 8 or 9. The Re and I don't know what distance you're racing, but the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro, the Hoka Carbon Rocket, the Nike Zoom Fly Flying It, uh, the New Balance Zante V4 or Pursuit. Uh, let's see, any others? Uh, oh yeah, well why not? The Adidas Audios 4. So again, I don't know what distance you're trying to race. Let's just take the Reebok Float Ride for example. Uh, you gotta be careful. This is a very lightweight shoe. Uh, it's expensive, so very expensive. Although I did see it for like, I think 30% off right now. So it is, the price is starting to come down for this shoe. Definitely, I would say a 5K, maybe 10K road racing shoe. And, uh, but you could definitely do some workouts in this shoe. But be just be careful. If you have a history of injuries, stay away from this shoe. But if you are completely injury-free and you want to race fast and train fast, 
this could be a great option. Then, if you're looking for a shoe for maybe something a little longer, the uh, the Nike Zoom Fly Flyknit along with the Carbon Rocket would be two other options. Uh, this is a one millimeter drop shoe. It's That doesn't get me too excited for racing, but if you're okay with zero drop or low drop, uh, this could be an option. It's a carbon fiber plate along with a Zoom Fly Flyknit. And then lastly, I really do like, I need to, I haven't raced yet in the fast twitch lineup, but as far as workouts go, uh, the times that I have put this guy on, I do like how snappy and how much ground feel I get in the Saucony fast twitch lineup. So uh, Lizette Malvarez, I hope that helps. And yes, all of these shoes are listed down below just so everyone knows. Okay, moving on. I'm going to try and be a little quicker. Uh, when did choosing a running shoe become so stressful? I've been trying to look into a larger drop after my marathon and half marathon. I like your thinking in a z after running his marathon and half marathon in a zero drop. He's looking at the Brooks Glycerin 17, a 10 millimeter drop and the Saucony Ride ISO 2, an 8 millimeter drop. Which do you think would be a good choice or uh, are they pretty much the same? And that's from Incredible Hulk. So if I had to choose from those two, I would lean toward the Saucony Ride ISO 2. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a, a marathon racing shoe. Um, but if you're, if you're just getting out there running and want to complete a marathon, it definitely would do the trick. Uh, so it is interesting that the Vaporfly 4% flying it, which I don't have out here right now, it's a 10 millimeter drop. And then the next iteration is called the next percent and they actually dropped down to eight millimeters. So, oh man, we're not going to get into all that right now, but I do think I am of the opinion, I like at least eight millimeter and even uh, preferably for me, 10 millimeter for fast racing. So another option I would say, of course, is the Pegasus 35 Turbo. Lots of good cushion. Um, it's uh, if you're looking for a shoe that is going to protect your legs. Now for something really snappy, snappy and fast, this is not the shoe. But if again, if you're looking to complete a half marathon and a marathon without beating up your legs too, too much. I think the Pegasus 35 Turbo is a great option. Okay, moving on. Good question. Uh, what cross-country spikes do you think are good? That's from Joey. I would go with the Nike Zoom Forever and the Hoka XC900. I've tried both on in running shoe stores here in Denver. I don't own them. I'm not a cross-country runner anymore, but I have just tried them on to see how they feel, and I like those two shoes. The Nike Zoom Forever 5 and the Hoka XC900 V4. Uh, but here's something crazy. I don't know if you're racing in an urban environment. I th So I did a couple races in Denver that mixed dirt and pavement. I, I prefer dirt for cross country, but you, 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 you get what you can take sometimes. The Reebok Float Ride. I guarantee there's gonna be some high schoolers out there that race in this shoe in the fall for cross country. You might, I mean, okay. In grass, uh, I like spikes for grass for sure. I bet some people will use this shoe on grass, but as far as like a, a, a really packed down dirt road, I think this Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro is going to show up on high schoolers' feet in the fall. So anyway, I hope that helps get you going in the right direction. Okay, moving on. And that question was from Joey. Shout out to Joey. Here we go. Seth, how many miles do you put on daily trainers? How do you determine what they're when they're done? and you move on to a new daily running shoe. Love the videos. That is from Stick Shift G. I believe it was on Instagram. So <clears throat> I look at midsole compression over outsole uh, wearing down. So the outsole on a shoe, when the, <clears throat> when, the, when the pattern on the outsole of a shoe is beginning to wear down, that's fine. But what I pay more attention to is the compression through the midsole. So when a shoe, you hear people talk about when a shoe feels dead, uh, that is when they begin to look into new running shoes. Here's my tip of the day. <clears throat> when you get a new pair, new pair of daily trainers, go run and then come back to your house immediately take notes on a piece of paper or on your phone on how the shoe felt with respect to snap, energy return, um, outsole grip for sure, and overall leg feel. Just like write out a paragraph, like a short paragraph, maybe 10 sentences, just like noting how they felt on your feet and your legs. And then in four to six weeks, 
revisit what you wrote down and compare, okay, do they feel on a scale of one to 10, do they still feel this snappy? Do they still feel like I'm getting this much energy return? And if you start to see a quick, if, if you're like, wait a minute, no, uh, instead of an eight, I now feel a three, that is a great sign that it is time to get a new daily trainer. Does that help? Uh, that's what I do, and it's I don't oft I don't take notes for all the shoes because now it's just like muscle memory. It's and it will take time for you to build up your muscle memory uh, with respect to different types of shoes, but it will happen. You just got to really dial in your mental focus when you're trying out the shoes at the beginning. So, all right, good, great question. And again, stick shift G. All right, moving on. Here we go from Joseph McCoy. Uh, Seth, are the Pegasus Turbos good cushion for plantar fasciitis? Yes, Joseph. My favorite shoes for dealing and running through plantar fasciitis were the Beacons, was my number one. And number two was the uh, Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo. Why? Cushion plus support. So some shoes have cushion, but not great support. Some shoes have great support, but not great cushion. So in order to alleviate some of that pain, I like a good cushion shoe, but I don't want to be completely, uh, completely loosey goosey through the midsole. I like a little bit of support, meaning through the arch. And uh, so anyway, those are my two shoes that helped me the most to deal with. It didn't, it didn't solve my PF, but it helped me train through and have a pretty successful road racing season last fall. So good question from Joseph. Moving on and. And, oh, this is fun. I love talking about running shoes with all of you. Here we go. Uh, this is from Glenn. I believe this is from YouTube, maybe. Uh, do you feel like zero drop matters on trails? In my opinion, I have found very little difference between shoes with a moderate drop and those with zero drop over rougher ground. That is from Glenn. Glenn, when I take uh, zero drop running shoes out on the trails, I do feel like I'm working harder which can be good for training, right? Good for strengthening your legs. Um, I, I, it's just, I feel like I'm, especially my calves, and that's that's part of the whole zero drop uh, movement and the whole zero drop experience is you, you are gonna work a little harder, in my opinion. Uh, this is, again, based on my experience. So, <clears throat> for racing, I would not race on the trails in a zero drop shoe. I think it's okay to get a little help from a higher drop in a running shoe. Now listen, there's plenty of successful trail racers out there who use Ultra and swear by Ultra, but for me, I prefer a shoe with a little higher drop. Again, just going back to, I do think that my sh my legs are working a little overtime in zero drop. So good question. That was from Glenn. Um, I hope I answered uh, that sufficiently. All right, and moving on to one more question here. This is from Adam. He, and this is in respect to the drop and the foot strike. This is a really good question. Uh, Adam asks, your logic is sound. I'm just curious what your thoughts are on. If you're already a four foot striker, then aren't you uh, not necessarily rolling through your heel? And if that's the case, I don't see the drop making as much of a difference since you're not using the entirety of what the drop references as one end point. That's from Adam. So I think what he's asking is, if you're a four foot striker, does the drop of a shoe really make a difference if you're not uh, really using your heel? So you're not, your foot strike is not heel, midfoot, toe, heel, midfoot, toe. It's just four foot, four foot, four foot. And therefore what's happening back here doesn't really make it a difference. Well, Adam, Base, even if so, Adam, if you go watch the 100 and 200 meter sprinters in the Olympics, they are true, true four foot strikers. Their heels do not touch the ground. But as soon as you start getting to the 400 meters, 800 meters, definitely the 1500 meters, even if, and these guys are definitely four foot strikers, these guys, the elites, even if you are a four landing on your forefoot, so just below your toes, you are your heel is still touching the ground, even if it's ever, ever so slightly. I love to be a four foot striker. That's where, I, that's where I live. But even on my best days, when I'm really focused on my form and my foot strike, I am still, even if it's ever so slightly, my heel is just dit, 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 just ever so slightly touching the ground. And over 40,000, 50,000 steps in a marathon, I truly believe that a higher drop in a running shoe lifts, it lifts your heel up just millimeters 
which translates to your Achilles tendon, your gastroc and soleus in your calf, and right up the kinetic chain into your lower, into your upper leg, which I think helps save your muscles energy just a little bit for later in the race. And oh my goodness, we did get into a little bit of a discussion, a little bit of a debate uh, four days ago on the vlog when we talked about drop, uh, talking about Kipchoge. Could he, you know, run faster or would he run faster or slower in a zero drop shoe? I'm on the side that he would run slower in a zero drop shoe. But um, anyway, and I'm talking zero drop, not necessarily four, because some people pointed out some fast marathon runners that race in four millimeter four millimeter, six millimeter, et cetera. So anyway, that's a topic for another day that we will revisit. Thank you, Adam, for that question. I hope I answered. And yes, keyword again is answers. And the question of the day, as I move into, as I transition out of the boot, I want to know how can I, so basically I'm so excited to get to review shoes again for you and to give you my first impressions and to just put shoes through time trials. But I want to know how can I improve the uh, running shoe reviews for you? So what would you like me to cover? What would you like me to cut out? What would you like me to add for filming? Anything you can think of for improving the running shoe reviews and first impression videos, which hopefully are returning sooner rather than later as I get healthy here. Uh, so that is the question of the day. Thanks for watching this second video. If you missed the vlog from this morning, go check it out, upper right hand corner. And that is it for today. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.